We've been talking all about it throughout the day. Nathan Mensa will return to the Mesa for a fifth season. And right now, Chris Acker, San Diego State assistant coach, joining us right here on John and Jim on Extra, about to enter his fourth season with the San Diego State men's basketball program. Coach, it is always great to have you with us here on the home of the Aztecs. And I'll start just by asking, what was your reaction when you found out it was official? Nathan will be back for another year. I was just really excited for Nate. Um, was just happy that he was able to come to a conclusion that, that made sense for him. Um, you know, obviously he was weighing two options, and both could have been great options for him. But the fact that he felt like uh, the better – situation for him was to come back um it's exciting we're, we're we're overjoyed to have nate back in the program what are, turn my mic on there what are some things that nathan needs to improve on in his game and that you're looking for him to improve this upcoming season well he's you know if, if you watch nate throughout his career you know i've been fortunate to be a part of it now for the last three years i can't believe i'm saying that i've been here three years already <laughs> um but uh you know, he's gotten better each year. Um, I think the biggest thing with him is going to be the level of consistency, being able to maintain um, playing well throughout the course of the season on the offensive end, um, you know, just continuing to get better. But also uh, the biggest thing, like I said, is just the consistency. Can he consistently be an impact guy on the offensive end of the floor? Because we know he's more than capable of it because we've seen it, um, you know, in spurts throughout the season. And we see it, you know, oftentimes in practice. Is he a bit of a – Chris Acker, San Diego State assistant coach with us right now, John and Jim. Defensively, though, coach, is he almost like a unicorn or like a one-of-one one with his ability to, to defend multiple positions at his size? Like how rare is his skill set defensively for the size that he's at? Well, he's an anchor. I mean, he wasn't the defensive player of the year for no reason. I mean, Nathan takes a tremendous amount of pride um, on that end of the floor, and, and he got better. I mean, it's – weird to say that he got better at that end of the floor. I mean, his communication got better. Um, his, his timing got better. Um, his, he's working to continue to develop his activity level um, on the glass. But, yeah, he's definitely a very rare, rare and, and, and special defensive player. Going into next season, Coach, uh, you guys are pretty set at, at, at all these all your positions. I mean, this is viewed just at right now on paper as one of the deepest Aztecs teams in school history do you believe that or or what other areas of needs are you looking at as a team they say okay we we need to get better in this area for next season no i mean we love all of the um the excitement around the guys and and you know deservingly so i mean we got guys that have come in the program that have chose san diego state um this year to come be a part of what we had going on and then we have guys returning that are excited and hungry i mean we didn't win a championship last year so um you know, we, we have a chip on our shoulder coming into this upcoming season, and, and I think as long as that chip remains throughout the course of the season, I think we're, uh, you know, destined to have a great season. Um, you know, our our guys are, are all committed to getting better, and they work. And at the end of the day, um, the names and, and, the, and, and every everybody's excitement about it is awesome, but the reason why we embrace everything that everyone's saying about this particular team is because we know – um, the first time we get the opportunity to get in the gym together, we're going to get to work, and it's going to carry on throughout the course of the season. Chris Acker with us right now, San Diego State men's basketball assistant, about to enter his fourth year on the Mesa. Again, San Diego State finding out officially today that Nathan Mensa will be back for a fifth season on the Mesa. Coach, what will these newcomers via the transfer portal add, specifically Darian Trammell, the guard, and uh, Micah Parrish, the wing? Um, you know, they're going to be able to add playmaking, shooting, um, you know, toughness, character, um, just all the things that, that go into a championship pedigree, which has, you know, been established here at San Diego State for a very long time. And so having guys that are like-minded added to guys that are hungry and eager to win. Um, and we brought in two guys in Darion and Micah that want to win championships and want to play in the NCAA tournament. And, you know, and, and they're being added to a group of guys that have played into the, played in the NCAA tournament. Now it's time to make a run in that tournament. So I think the collective effort from both groups, the guys returning and the guys that are coming in, um, and then, you know, a, a seamless mindset from the coaching staff and, and all of us working together, um, I think we're going to do something special, like I said earlier, and, and be able to capitalize on, you know, hopefully uh, an unbelievable season this upcoming year. 
Coach, Aztecs fans haven't gotten to see Jaden Ledee yet in an Aztecs uniform, but you guys see him every day. What uh, what should fans expect to see from him next season? Well, they're going to see, you know, a guy that is just an unbelievable rebounder, a guy with a great motor. Um, you know, he's, he's experienced. Um, he's a great teammate. But, I mean, his strength and his power around the basket um, is something that's going to be, you know, hard for teams to contest against. So, um, you know, obviously, Jane, like the rest of our guys, has got a lot of work to do and a lot of things to prove to himself and to his teammates and to Aztec Nation. But I think he's up for the task and he's more more than capable of having a uh, premier year this upcoming season. You know, I always start when I talk about Matt Bradley saying that there's no way your program is in the position it's in to get into the NCAA tournament without the unbelievable play for Matt throughout the course of the year. With all that being said, I think Matt had a really honest moment after the Creighton game. I think Mark Ziegler maybe asked him about you know, some of the late game situations in the second half of the year. And then Matt was super honest with it, saying, you know, it, it was something that he had thought about, even if he didn't want to. It was something that he thought about and he kind of wanted to, I'm paraphrasing, obviously, he needed some type of, of reset. Um, and it was an important off season, he said, for him coming up. So based on everything that transpired in his first year on the Mesa, what are some of the goals for Matt this off season? Well, Matt, you know, he's got a great disposition about him because he understands that, you know, his, his when he came to San Diego State, it, he wanted to try and fit in and gain the trust of his teammates. And he erred on the side of that a little bit more than, you know, we wanted him to. And so it took him a little bit of time to get comfortable. And then once he got comfortable, you know, we saw some flashes of some things that, you know, none of us had ever seen um, in terms of his ability to score. If you think back to that Wyoming game at Wyoming. Right. Um, you know, he was just – he was a monster. And so I think now that Matt trusts the system. I mean, when you transition in back in the day – um, a little while ago, when you transferred, you had to sit a year, and then you got acclimated to the program. And a lot of people forget Malachi Flynn even set out a year prior to playing that year that he had when we were 30-2. and two. And that sit-out year is a year where you get comfortable with the system, you get comfortable with the coaches, you get comfortable with your teammates, and then that next year, it's not new information anymore. And so for Matt, you know, coming into it his first year, he had a lot of things thrown at him all at once. And credit to him, credit to Coach Dutcher, um, for meeting him halfway on it. But, you know, it took him time to kind of get comfortable. And, you know, he was in his head a lot throughout the season. And I think a couple times, obviously, at the free throw line, you know, he had things going through his mind. Um, you know, I, I, I talked to Matt on the regular now, and I think Matt has said that he's going to be extremely comfortable coming into this season. And his goal is to be, you know, arguably the best player in the Mountain West this year. And so um, I don't think that's far-fetched, and I think he's excited for this upcoming season. Coach, you, you mentioned expectations, but with the expectations so high for your team this season at this point, what's your message to the kids and, and your, your team and, and the players like to prepare themselves to go into a season with this such high expectations, even though they've all been together for a good amount of time and you're, you're, you're just adding to the, to the pieces you had last year, but still, I mean, you guys are expected, we talked to all the players, like, yo, Sweet 16, Elite 8, like that, that's, a, that's pretty high expectations for a team that's had, under Coach Dutch that hasn't won a tournament game yet? Well, you know, we want those expectations. I mean, that's why we're in this. We, yeah. we want the ball to be high. We want to set the tone. We want to come out every single night expecting to win every game. But at the end of the day, our coaching staff, our players, we all know it's about the work. And we never shortchange the work. And so we're comfortable talking about the expectations. We're, ta we're comfortable talking about winning championships. We're comfortable talking about making a run in the NCAA tournament because that's the goal. And the process along the way is going to be on us to make sure that we're taking care of our business um, day in and day out. And that's the reason why we've had success. This program has had success for years on end. And a lot of times in the NCAA tournament, you know, things happen. And so we're not going to – we're not going to talk a ton about winning games in the NCAA tournament because we want to win our conference tournament. We want to win the conference tournament championship, and then we want to focus on that. But right now it's going to be the work we put in this summer is going to be critical to the success that we're going to have going into the uh, preseason and the non-conference and then going into conference. So we're just going to take it one day at a time. 
Coach, before we let you go, I mean, it's such a veteran team. you got all these players with three, four, five years of collegiate experience. Dutch has always said, you know, if you can stay old, you put yourself in a good position to win. But I did want to ask you about some of the younger players. I mean, Demarche Johnson Jr. last year redshirted. You've got a couple of incoming freshmen as well, Elijah Saunders and Miles Bird. Um, and I know it's still early in the process. In, in fact, some of those incoming players probably aren't yet with you on the Mesa. But what's your level of excitement like for some of the younger players in this program? Well, you've got to be excited about the young guys. I mean, this program's always been set on the four-year guys, the Matt Mitchells, the Jordan Shackles, the now Keyshawn Johnson, Lamont Butler. I mean, these guys that have been in the program for years on end that have learned the system and the style of play and what the expectations are. So, you know, our goal for these guys coming in is to pick up things right away. We recruited them because we want we, we, we saw something in them that we thought, hey, they can come in here and make an impact and make an imprint on this program. And they saw us and said, hey, this is a program that can help me take my game to another level. So um, our expectations are high from them right away. And, you know, we know that they're excited about coming and, and being a part of what we have going on. And we can't wait to get to work with those young guys. Well, Coach, I mean, it's still a while off, but it won't be long. Obviously, San Diego State basketball returning this fall with an unbelievable non-conference schedule, including Maui, Dutch, I think earlier today with Darren Smith, talked about an opponent, um, talked about BYU. He said you guys are working on a potential Pac-12 opponent as well. So it's going to be fun. We're looking forward to it this fall starting in November. We appreciate you doing it, and we look forward to doing it again at some point over the summer, all right? I appreciate that. Thank you guys so much, and go out there.